What's up, party people? It's Jamie from the Albuquerque 737 Experience. This is episode three for the mode control panel. Um, as you guys know, the original mode control panel was destroyed in shipping, and it was a bit of a nightmare getting through the process for that. But I'd like to give a huge shout out to Steve from Flight Deck Solutions, uh, the Steve from shipping, since there's a couple of them there. Um, helped me navigate all of the, the BS that goes with returning a part and getting a new one shipped off to you. Anyway, got the new uh, MCP, got the new EFIS. They're both working really, really good. Uh, we're going to focus on the MCP for this episode, and I'll do another episode for the EFIS. It'll be a much shorter video. Um, so let's get into it. So here's the Flight Deck Solutions Mode Control Panel, or MCP. Um, just right off the bat, looking at it, it's just beautifully beautifully built um, every detail was paid attention to here we've even got the little marking in the middle here that you'd see on the real aircraft good heavy switches everything feels super um, realistic even your auto throttle here is super heavy that's not going to stay engaged until you have a power source hooked up we'll show you how to do that here in just a minute but um, yeah all the switches work really good and couldn't be happier with this and most importantly this one's intact so here's what's going to come inside your box you got the mode control panel obviously and then if you ordered one or both of the ephases they'll be in separate boxes within the main box um, you're going to get all the cables for this one so you don't have to buy anything extra um, you got your 5 volt ibl cable that makes all the backlighting work um, you've got your 12 volt auto throttle cable that allows the solenoid and the auto throttle switch to work. Uh, if you don't have that hooked up, the switch is not going to remain engaged. Uh, you've got your USB cable to hook it to your computer, and then you've got your power supply with uh, various tips for it, depending on which country you're in. So here's the back of the MCP. Um, there are four hookups for it. Uh, they go to the corresponding wires that we showed you earlier. We'll go ahead and uh, show you how this works. Here's the USB that came with it. Um, go ahead and that plugs in right here. Then your power cable. You've got your IBL 5 volt. That's the red and black one. These are different fittings, so it's dummy proof. You can't put the wrong one in, or at least shouldn't be able to. Those just click right in. No big deal. And then your auto throttle 12 volt. So to get the IBL and auto throttle switch to work, you're gonna have to provide power to them. Uh, this can be accomplished in a bunch of different ways. I chose to do a computer power supply. So I just got this little guy right here. I've already tested it, it works great. Um, just took one of the main lines here and cut the appropriate cables. Everything is color coded here. so. Um, red is your 5 volt, black is your ground, green is a control wire which tells the power um, unit to turn on, yellow is going to be your 12 volt, and we're going to go ahead and just, uh, I've already done it, but you'll want to strip the ends of the wires, and then you'll want to use either wire nuts or uh, crimping connectors or something like that. For right now, I'm just going to connect them uh, just by twisting them. I'll do a more uh, permanent way off camera. So just connect a green to the black, and then black to black. Again, you have to have the green wire hooked into the ground here, otherwise the unit won't turn on. And then you'll want the red wire to the red wire. Okay, so that's that one. And then do the same thing for this, you'll want a yellow wire and you'll want a second black wire. So we've got these two right here. So then you take your yellow and black here. I want to preserve these tips, so I'm going to go ahead and not cut them. I'm just going to wrap this around these for now. Just like so. And again, you're going to want to use a better connection method than this. This is just real quick so I can show you the basics of it. And then make sure that they don't touch. Make sure that they're, you know, isolated through either electrical tape or through connectors. 
So let's get on to testing this. Um, once you have your PMDG aircraft open and uh, ready to go, you're going to come over here to your uh, Flight Deck Solutions PMDG controller. You're going to right click. You're going to run as administrator. It'll ask you if you wanted to make changes. Go ahead and say yes. So it looks like that. It'll detect it. It'll also pick up your CDU. Um, once that's on, you'll notice that the lights have come on over here. Okay, so let's go ahead and test our wiring here. We're going to turn on the power supply. The integrated backlighting turns on and looks great. Um, it's important to note that until you have a dimming module for it, it's either going to be on or off. Um, that's something I'll purchase once I get the MIP and start uh, wiring all the other lighting in there. All right, let's go ahead and check the functionality of the mode control panel. We'll go ahead and just start on the left and work our way to the right. Um, start with the course knob here. We'll change this around a bit. It seems to be doing what it should be doing. The uh, flight director switch, when we turn that on, it should turn on the master arm light. It does. It does it virtually as well. Let's go ahead and turn on the other one and make sure that it doesn't arm the master arm on the co-pilot side. Okay, that works. We'll do the auto throttle next. We'll push it up and hold it till it clicks. There you go, and it'll hold itself up. It's important that you don't push down on this switch to get rid of this, or to disengage that. You want to use your auto throttle disengage, which is on the side of your um, throttle here. So we'll go ahead and give that a double click. All right. Our speed is working. Our heading is working. Notice that it's moving the bug. All right, bank is working. Altitude, good. Hit this so we can check our vert speed. Shows up as zero. This goes up by a hundred, and then it'll sync up with the computer, and now it matches. So. I'll have to work on this and see why it's doing that, but this is going up by 100, and that one is going up by 50s. After a couple seconds, it does sync up so that they match. I'll work on that. Um, we got our course. That's doing what it should be doing. All that's working. Disengage. Perfect. So the first of our alternative products is going to be from CP Flight. They've got three levels of their MCP ranging from 500 euro to 1200 euro. Um, here is their middle ground one. This is the one that's available at the moment. Here's the compatibility list for it. Here is the new one that is not available yet per the website, but it should be out soon. It's a little more expensive, but has a lot more features. Here's the other two. Here is how all of the stuff will hook up if you go with all CP products. And here's the price list for all three. Our next alternative product is going to be from GoFlight. Coming in at approximately $470 American. Um, this is a very, very low end um, option for you. Uh, you'll notice that it's all gray. There's no um, coloration to the buttons, the switches are all generic, there's nothing on it that's particularly uh, accurate or replica in nature, but if you're not looking to spend a lot of money and still want to be able to physically touch you know, an MCP and do that, then this will be a good option for you. And our last alternative product is going to be from Open Cockpit. It's much the same as the one before, it's not terribly accurate, but it is considerably cheaper. Um, not a true replica in any way, shape, or form, but definitely the cheapest option if you're looking to have a physical MCP on your desk. So I found a glitch with the Flight Deck Solution controller program and PMDG. 
if you try to use a PMDG add-on livery, such as say like a Southwest or a United Airlines Delta, any kind of uh, add-on livery, a lot of times it will not start the um, the externals like the CDU, the FCP, FIS, stuff like that. Um, they'll turn on for a quick second and then they'll click right back off. The fix for that one is to load a stock PMDG aircraft that will go ahead and start it up and then switch over to a different livery if that's what you want to do. But that's how I've gotten around that glitch right there. That's all I got for you guys this time. I'm gonna go ahead and um, wrap this up. I'll have an EFIS video up for you guys in the next few weeks. Um, a lot of things going on in my life right now, so it might be a little bit before the next video. Uh, we're actually going to look at a house today that we might be buying. Uh, just got a promotion at work, so that's very exciting. Um, I'm hoping to order the throttle quadrant in the next two weeks. I will keep you posted on the Facebook page for that. So as always, uh, like and share this video, subscribe if you don't mind. Check out our Facebook page and I will see you on the next one. Later guys.